Welcome to the Electricity for HVAC simulator. This is the wiring diagram module and we're looking at the residential air conditioner wiring diagram. Now uh, this unit has a lot of switches and several electrical loads and I just want to briefly go over those. Um, if we look starting at the top we have the compressor and condenser fan motor. We also have the indoor fan motor. We have the contactor coil which is basically a relay coil. We have a crankcase heater. The crankcase heater is a small electric resistance heater that's typically uh, wrapped around the circumference of the compressor and provides heat during the off cycle. What will happen typically uh, in an off cycle is if the unit is located in a cold enough area or there's a large refrigerant charge or if it just happens to be a really long off cycle, refrigerant will migrate as vapor to the compressor crankcase. This is where the oil is contained. Um, this vapor will actually begin to condense in the oil and because it's heavier that liquid refrigerant now will sink to the bottom of the crankcase. When the compressor restarts there will be an, basically an explosion of this refrigerant as the pressure is reduced and it could cause significant damage to the compressor. Uh, it could uh, wipe oil from the load bearing surfaces, cause a lot of friction wear and eventually seizing or breaking of components within the compressor. So the crankcase heater is a pretty important component if you have one of those conditions. Again, the compressor is in a low ambient temperature, the compressor has a long off cycle, or there's a large refrigerant charge. But going back to the CR coil here, we can see that when it's de-energized, the crankcase heater is on, these contacts are closed. We don't need the crankcase heater while the compressor runs because of course there's plenty of heat there to prevent the refrigerant from condensing in there at that point. To start with we're going to uh, click on the system selector switch here at the bottom to the on position and this just closes the contacts within the thermostat uh, that allows 24 volts to reach the contacts within the thermostat. Now we have a couple options here. We can run ventilation mode, which simply means we can just turn the indoor fan on. This would be a concern if you had uh, you know, indoor air quality issues primarily, uh, filtration that would need to be provided for someone who maybe has allergies or possibly asthma is one of those conditions. Uh, this would make indoor air quality obviously very important. Now to do that you just simply click the fan switch to on and when we do that you can see this little fan switch move here and the indoor fan relay coil lights up indicating it's energized and it's normally open contacts now close up here providing 240 volts to the indoor fan motor. Again this is just ventilation mode if we notice the compressor and condenser fan are not operational at this point. Now we're going to go back to the auto position. With the fan switch in the auto position the indoor fan relay will only energize and operate the indoor fan motor when there's an actual call for cooling. So we're going to do that. In order to call for cooling we need to set the system thermostat down below the space temperature or you can use the slider and turn the space temperature up above. Either way I'm going to use the system thermostat and just set the down arrow below the space temperature which is currently 73 degrees and we can see that the thermostat contacts close and provides a path of current flow to both the indoor fan relay and the control relay. Now if we look back at the control relay we can see that those normally closed contacts right here now open and that would turn off the crankcase heater. Okay. Some manufacturers choose to leave the crankcase heater on all the time um, so as not to rely on a simple relay to, for protection. Now going back to CR, uh, if we look here we have the normally open contacts which now close. This allows current flow through those contacts and through the three safety switches, the high pressure switch, the low pressure switch, and the compressor internal thermostat uh, to the contactor coil. So we're basically in, a, in effect using a relay to turn on another relay here. When this relay coil within the contactor energizes, it closes its two contacts up here which provides power to the compressor and condenser fan which we can see is running. So this is in cooling mode. Now when you're using the sim I would recommend that you start with training mode and you play around a little bit till you get used to it but you can go to challenge mode by clicking on this tab up here at the top left if you click challenge mode what it's going to allow you to do is insert faults into the wiring diagram. If you click on this little X over here which is the third button down 
we can actually select any one of these faults. So for this example, I'm going to select the high pressure switch here. And we can see we've opened the high pressure switch. I'm going to turn the system back on. I'm going to turn the thermostat set point below 80, which it's already at 68 degrees. And if we look here, we can see that although the relay coils are energized, um, the indoor fan motor is running, we have no compressor or condenser fan operation. And this is because the contactor coil is not receiving power. Now, this could lead us to a lot of possible causes not knowing what the problem is. It could be possibly the CR relay is bad. It is possible that we have a faulty set of CR contacts here, that we have one of the safety switches is at fault, or possibly the contactor coil itself or its contacts are at fault. But since we selected the high pressure switch, we know that that's the fault. And you can click on the meter here at the bottom right, turn the selector dial to AC volts, and we can simply drop the leads at any of the glowing hot spots on the diagram. In this case here, I'm going to start at the contactor coil. Uh, that would be probably a logical place if you didn't know what the fault was. Um, when we click here, we can see we have no voltage present at the contactor coil, which now indicates that we've got a problem with either one of the safety switches or possibly the CR contacts. I'm going to simply go back and start checking some of these contacts. Now you want to begin at the beginning of the circuit. Um, I'm going to start at the CR contacts. Now when we place the leads across a closed set of contacts, there should be no difference in potential uh, if the contacts are in fact closed. And we can see we have zero volts here, meaning we have 240 volts in and 240 volts out. The digital voltmeter measures voltage by measuring potential difference between the two leads. Our next step is to move to the high pressure switch and if we move the leads across the high pressure switch again if it's closed we should read zero volts but in fact when we do this we can see we have 240 volts which indicates we have power into the contacts of the high pressure switch but nothing coming out again the meter is reading the difference in voltage here Another feature of the challenge mode is the quiz, and I would recommend strongly that when you finish and you feel you're pretty adept uh, with the wiring diagram, to click on the star at the top left here, which will launch a quiz for you. Now it's a series of questions that's just going to test your knowledge of the individual wiring diagrams. A score of 90% or above will earn you a badge. Good luck. Hey, it is Craig with Interplay Learning. We hope you enjoyed this last video. The easiest way to keep up with all of our latest videos is by subscribing to our page right here. Just to let you know, if you're interested to learn how simulations are critical to onboarding and improving you or your employees' performance in the field, please visit us at interplay-learning.com.